Good morning, friends. Welcome to OBE journal number 16 of 2023. And um, I'd like to touch on a few uh, topics. This might just be part one. Don't have a lot of time. Uh, thinking a lot about um, how every stage of life, every aspect of incarnation is uh, just another experience to go through. You live through them and come out the other side of the experience. Happy, sad, ecstatic, boring. <laughs> And uh, you can feel the consciousness, the I am, behind all those experiences. Whatever they lead you through, those experiences, those influences, those energetic situations. They uh, all fall away, despite their interest level, their excitement. They uh, leave you knowing who you are. That uh, focus of consciousness that has uh, parked itself in this body and in this soul for a lifetime in a series of lifetimes. And uh, with that understanding, let me continue. <laughs> you might be surprised uh, that I'm uh, going to interact a little bit with Mary Pinchot Meyer. Um, who will be described, if you uh, Google her name, as a Washington socialite in the 1950s and 60s. Wife of Cord Meyer. Uh, they divorced. She uh, pursued her life as an expressive artist and her social connections with many that she had uh, grown up with, gone to school with, one of which was JFK. And uh, she became quite an important, affectionate, romantic attachment for him, and certainly had access to his uh, life and inner circle. One aspect of her situation was her interest in psychedelics, which uh, Timothy Leary wrote about in his uh, memoir many years ago and has been confirmed by others. And um, many have uh, thought through this connection and what it might have meant for the world. She and we suspect others taking LSD with Kennedy uh, might have turned his head even more toward uh, world peace and harmony, as naive as that may seem now. And um, of course was shocked at his assassination and um, lived another year, year and a half after that, and was herself murdered in what looks very much like an orchestrated uh, situation, probably by CIA assets. This is all covered in Peter Janney's book, Mary's Mosaic, uh, in great detail, I might add. 
Peter Janney uh, was in the same social group, social class, Washington elite. Um, he was great buddies with her middle son when he was six, seven, eight, nine, I believe, and was very sad at his uh, that son's passing in a basically almost random car accident, um, child hit by car. And um, when I was uh, re-watching uh, a six-year-old interview with Peter Janey uh, on the release of the third edition of his book, the maybe a week ago, I felt Mary's presence very strongly. And I was quite surprised. And uh, then she sort of teased me and said, Oh, come on, Gordon, don't be surprised. You're here all the time. And um, don't give me that nonsense type of thing. And a very sort of jovial, friendly contact. Um, she's obviously very uh, uh, adjusted to her life in the afterlife. And has a all-consuming enjoyment in what she is and does. Um, Peter Janey talked about her uh, artwork that she worked on here in Washington up until her death in 64. Just uh, the murder on the towpath. You'll find a, uh, a blog on that, a audio blog, podcast, Murder on the Towpath. And... Um, that has in intrigued her, this interest. The biography's been out for years, or the, the, the book on her untimely demise and the uh, attempt to shut her up because she knew a lot. And, of course, within the, the same day as her uh, peculiar murder on the towpath, um couple of uh, CIA guys and Ben Bradley broke into her uh, studio and stole her diary and uh, was never seen again. I think you get the picture. One of uh, many people connected to the uh, Kennedy assassination situation and not just witnesses people who mysteriously died. Anyway, that's that's all over for her now. And uh, I think she wanted to confirm the... Uh, I'm, I'm almost tempted to use the word joviality. <laughs> and uh, that's how she struck me, as someone who was, you know, that you would meet at a party and uh, would say come on to the other room and look at my artwork. Because she did show me that. And her, I believe, circular designs that perhaps were on canvas or board, I'm not sure, had um, expanded into cylinders. And um, through her mental efforts, her imaginative constructions. Now, you know from other videos that art, and artists have great freedom of expression in the afterlife worlds and can create with their imagination, their mind's eye, color, shape, form. They can also go the traditional route of canvas, oil paints, brushes, etc. Um, but uh, they can create with their minds, and I think that's what she has done. And she showed me, like, as I, I'm interacting with her telepathically and thinking, why is she bothering with me? Um, she's showing me these cylindrical things that sort of breathe in and out. And the, there's a, you know, the image of a circular painting's on the end of a sort of a large sort of can, if you like, the shape of a can, you know, and, but the image is interestingly repeated on the sides, and 
It, it breathes in and out. So that's part of its action. I was quite charmed with this. And she's kind of like, see what I'm doing now? Isn't that cool? And uh, I was very struck by this. This is somebody from a completely different generation than me, a middle-aged woman that passed in 1964 when I was about 12. Um, so, um, but she knew of my interaction, you, you know, my earlier channelings of uh, uh, JFK, RFK, and that one time where I, I'm talking or witnessing the Kennedy clan and friends. That's an old one. So uh, obviously I'm interacting more than I'm remembering. And because she just teased the dickens out of me. Come on, Gord, you remember this. What are you here all the time? And I'm going, okay, so I am. So uh, she was just renewing an acquaintance, believe it or not, and affirming the joyousness of her life. I'm sure uh, there's, you know, the son that died young, he's there too. She didn't mention him. But the implication was everybody was there enjoying their afterlife. Um, and, you know, I know from other uh, contacts in the past, this in includes some of you know, Kennedy's uh, political colleagues of of the day but also some of those that conspired against him and uh, much as I <laughs> have a hard time imagining Alan Dulles palling it up with Kennedy now but uh, the uh, forgiveness and uh, renewed uh, efforts at friendliness and harmony amongst not just individuals but nations and individuals that may feel they still represent nations is is a fact of life there and um she didn't mention any names she just sort of hinted to like oh god you know what i'm talking about just put it online would you and um i thought cool and um as i, as I say i was watching uh, an in six-year-old interview with peter jenny the author of Mary's Mosaic, a fine book, I might add. If you're interested in uh, that situation and the deviousness of the agency operatives in setting up her assassination just to shut her up. So, um, thank you, Mary. Thank you for that. Another reminder of the uh, exhilaration of afterlife existences and self-expression. Uh, something we've touched on on this uh, video blog before, but uh, here we are again doing it. And uh, I uh, suspect there will be a part two here because um, since thinking of this, you know, in the last few days and following the, the UAP uh, imbroglio through the various podcasts and interviews that we've been seeing, with people like David Grush and Jeremy Corbell, etc., etc., um, I I get this funny feeling that Harry Reid wants to chip in a few words. So um, we'll get to that in a few minutes. And uh, until those few minutes pass, <laughs> which of course is just another experience, um, I shall say au revoir, mes amis and uh, get right back to you.